Michelle Wogan, who is also giving a 30 minute talk. Hi, Michelle. Michelle is an ELT materials writer and educator who specializes in primary education and is based in Spain, as well as writing materials for primary, pre-primary and lower secondary courses. She writes educational and blog content. She also frequently gives workshops at conferences and also runs a local teaching association. During Michelle's talk, um, we recommend watching it in speaker view. As always, if you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box. Hi, Michelle, how are you? Hi, Rachel. Thank you for that introduction. <laughs> Take it away, please share your screen. Okay, great. Okay, is that okay? Can everybody see my screen? Okay, I'm just going to open the chat so I can see what people are saying. Um, okay, so um, today um, I'm going to share a few tips and activities uh, that I think help the classroom become a calm place. Um, all the things, all the activities and tips that I'm going to share today are things that I've used in my own classroom in recent years. Um, and I think they're going to be useful. I hope you'll find them useful and um, you'll be able to try some new ideas out in your own classes. Um, so we're going to start with a little relaxation. So I'd like you to take a moment to relax and sit comfortably. I invite you to close your eyes if that helps. And I want you to imagine that you're in a park and you see a nice big tree with a large trunk and thick branches with leaves, lots of leaves. And at the bottom of the tree, the roots twist away and you notice that two roots seem to form the arms of a comfortable chair. It, it's as if the, the tree is inviting you to sit down between those two roots. So I want you to sit down between the roots of the tree and lean back and look up at the branches above you. It starts to rain pitter pattering against the leaves, making a soothing sound. You feel protected and warm, as if you could drift off to sleep. Breathe in that fresh, damp, rainy smell. And breathe out and sink back against the trunk of the tree. And now I'd like you to imagine a classroom, a calm classroom. Visualise this classroom in your mind. What does it look like? What does it sound like? Take a few seconds just to think and imagine. Now open your eyes, if you want to. <laughs> um, did your classroom look like any of these pictures that here you can see on my screen? Did it look different? Whatever you imagine, this is a personal response um, hopefully you imagined your classroom with some of your students in it, not like the picture in the bottom right corner here that's empty. <laughs> um, keeping a classroom of primary children calm isn't an easy task, but today we're going to look at a few tips and ideas that will help. So for me, a calm classroom has a few ingredients and I've managed to fit these into the letters of the word calm. Um, so you can see these, these ingredients here. This, this is what we're going to look at today in this session. Now, how you begin the lesson can really affect how the rest of the lesson goes. It's when you need to get students focused. Um, so it's important to get the children settled and ready to learn. Um, However you start the lesson, whether you want to kick off with a, a review of the previous lesson, um, uh, however you start it, I think it's important to um, get the actual lesson content started as soon as possible, um, because it can be easy to kind of get distracted by social chat. Um, 
so I think the way, the best way to to keep some kind of control and keep the students calm is to is to have them uh, ready and and then just start uh, with your lesson. So um, in previous in pre COVID times, I would have suggested starting the lesson with circle time. Now, if you were attended Elena's session just now, um, she shared some great ideas about circle time, and um, for early years now. It's not just for young learners. I use circle time for early years, pre-primary and primary students too, um, because I think it's a nice way of getting everybody sitting down, looking at each other, um, sharing thoughts and ideas, and, and it creates a sense of community. You, know, you don't have to have them sitting on the floor. <laughs> they can uh, form a circle with their chairs. Um, but I think it's, for me, if you have students sitting in a circle, they're less likely to become distracted and therefore misbehave than if they're looking at the back of someone's head if they're sitting in rows. Um, now, I am aware that with social distancing measures, this type of seating might not work. Um, so we need to come up with other ways of fomenting community, the community aspect, um, because it becomes harder to take the focus off the teacher now. Um, but whether you're teaching face to face or online, um, the beginning of the lesson is when you need to have everyone's attention and all the students need to be ready to start. Um, I just mentioned the word community um, and I think it's important whether you have a circle time or not, it's important to have certain periods of the lesson that are designated to whole class discussion. Um, so by discussion, I mean the chance to share ideas, to ask questions and listen to each other, um, try to get students into the habit of coming back together after any kind of individual work or pair work or group work um, to share uh, and feedback. Um, it can be difficult to do this with, if you're not in a circle, um, because if the stu students can't see each other if they're sitting in rows, but you could get around this by having a, um, like a, a presentation space in the classroom where the student who's speaking has to stand facing the class or, or simply have them stand up maybe. And whatever your setup is really important to make sure that the rules are clear for behaviour. Um, whether it's circle time or any kind of open discussion. So uh, with this, I'm really uh, referring to turn taking at primary level because most of them will know how to sit still, uh, hopefully. Um, turn taking, what should students do if they want to speak? Um, you need to, to make this clear. Do they need to raise their hand, do something else? Um, you also need to ensure that students listen to each other when somebody else is speaking. And again, Elena in her session just before this one also shared some tips on this. Um, and finally, it's, it's really important to praise those children who are following the instructions, those children that are ready and waiting rather than focusing on those that aren't. Now, as well as these whole class discussions and presentations, um, you'll need to provide some other types of activities, maybe some quieter individual activities or, or pair work or group work. And I'm going to call this table time. Um, ideally, there will be a different setup for this from circle time, um, but this obviously will depend on the seating that you have. And it might not be so practical at the moment with the with social distancing restrictions. Um, so we've looked at the letter C of calm and now we're going to move on to the A and my keywords here are agency, autonomy and affectivity. The first one, agency, refers to giving children responsibility. Um, this helps them learn to develop important skills as well as helping with the classroom management. Um, and I, I saw the plenary, uh, the opening plenary to this conference by Jake from StudyCat before, and he mentioned at the end, giving students choice over what they do. And this is, um, I think it's really important. Um, you can give students choice on lots of different aspects of the lesson. So for example, you can allow them to choose what to do, which activities to do. Um, they can choose um, who to do it with, 
whether to do it individually with a partner in groups so the dynamics of the activity you can allow them to choose the quantity so if you have if you want them to do a, a, an exercise in their course book and it's there are 10 questions maybe they don't need to do all 10 questions maybe they can choose to do five questions or seven questions um, and also the format is a, another way in which they can choose so maybe they can choose to um, do the activity as a speaking task or they can write their answers or they can draw pictures there are lots of ways in which you can offer choice and these choices allow students to become more autonomous in their learning um, and helps them them develop responsibility for their learning um, and it also provides a more affective learning environment um, but it's important to remember that they are children and the level of responsibility and autonomy that you give them will depend on their age, their level of maturity. And of course, within the same class, not all students will have the same level of maturity. But you can start off by giving them small choices to make small decisions and then gradually increase the importance. Um, one quick tip uh, regarding affectivity, and I think, uh, Elena mentioned this too, um, it's important to get to know the children and find out some little bits of information about their lives, even if it's just something like their favourite football team or knowing what after school activities they do. Um, if you ask them how they did in their basketball match, this can really make a child feel like you're interested in them and you see them as a person, a real person and not just a student. Um, you can do this as they come into the class or while they're lining up or at any point in the lesson where you know you've got a little bit of time to, to chat with the students. So this is a way of being more affective in your teaching. Let's move on to L. Um, the type of leader you are in the classroom will depend on your personality and a leader doesn't necessarily you know mean being authoritarian. Um, personally, as a teacher, I prefer to lead by example, uh, modelling the behaviour that I want my students to have. Um, it can be very easy to raise your voice when things start to get out of control. But if you want a quiet classroom, uh, you have to try to avoid raising your voice. Yeah? Um, one trick can be to gradually reduce the volume of your voice so that the students need to be very quiet in order to hear you. Um, and the same uh, point goes with uh, energy levels. So if you want your students to be energetic and enthusiastic about an activity, you have to use that tone yourself. You have to show that energy yourself when introducing the activity. So always try to pay attention to your own language, your voice and your body language. Um, my next point is to listen with all your senses. So what do I mean by that? Well, I, I mean, pay attention to the energy levels in the classroom um, and adapt your lesson plan according to the energy levels. So uh, try to notice how much students are engaged in an activity or how little. Um, if they're really into something, then maybe you can let them carry on for a bit longer. If they're not interested, then you know, be flexible and try to switch the activity to something else. Um, and then I think I mentioned this in circle time, but um, life skills like listening to each other and turn taking are really uh, important too. Um, one way of getting children to listen to each other, which can be quite difficult, uh, especially with the younger ones, is to tell them that you're going to ask them questions about what their classmates said. Or even better is to tell them that they have to ask a question about what their classmate didn't say, so what they didn't mention. Um, and the, the question thing is all about forming habits. So when the students get into the habit and they know they have to ask a question, then they, they'll start to ask their own questions and form their own questions off their own backs. So we've gone through C, A and L, 
the last letter is N. Um, and I, I hear I've called this mindful movement. Um, kids need to move, children need to move, especially if they've been sitting down for most of the day. Um, in my case, uh, I, when I was uh, teaching primary children, they were usually coming to my lessons after school and they'd been sitting down all day and they really needed to move. Um, so try to incorporate plenty of activities with movement into your lesson plan. Now this doesn't mean having the children running around like mad, <laughs> uh, which is why I've called it mindful movement. Um, by movement, I mean anything that requires physical activity or use of the body rather than sitting still in the chair. And one way in which you can incorporate movement is through transitions. So transitions are how you get from one stage of the lesson to another. Um, for example, uh, if you've had circle time, moving from circle time to table time, or sitting back down after a song or a game. So you can include transitions that require movement. Uh, for example, brain breaks. Brain breaks are very short activities. They just last a few seconds or a couple of minutes. And these breaks help students focus and concentrate on their next task. And they usually require some movement. So it could be doing star jumps or shaking their body. Um, one mindful example is the ninja walk, um, where students just have to walk silently as if they were a ninja, creeping around to avoid anyone noticing them. So it's like they have to kind of be invisible. Um, this has different names. I've seen it called the stealth walk or invisible man. Um, it's just a, a, a way of getting students to move in a calm way, uh, rather than running back to their seats. Um, make sure that you have a system for moving around the classroom, especially now, uh, if you're teaching face-to-face -face with social distancing measures, this is essential. Um, younger children might need some visual cues, like posters or signs, or even just gestures um, to, to, to show them when they have to move. Um, you could colour code tables or teams. If they're sitting at individual desks, they can still have colour codes. And then use flashcards to signal uh, whose turn it is to stand up and move. Uh, whatever your system, um, you always use the same one so that the children internalise it and they always know what to do. Um, and routines can help with this. So. Um, if you always start the lesson in the same way, or if you always do activities in a certain order, then the children know what to expect and they're more likely to do what is expected of them. Um, you can also use songs and music to signal transitions. So with early years, uh, there are lots of songs like the tidy up song or lining up song. Um, but with primary kids, primary children, you could use any piece of music. It could be a clip of one of their favourite pop songs, for example, um, or some kind of sound, sound effect. Uh, you could use a bell or a buzzer or, or just a, a sound effect um, that you can find on apps on your mobile phone or tablet or computer. Anything that, that provides some kind of acoustic signal. Okay. Um, I'm going to share a few activities that I like to use uh, in the primary classroom that have uh, some kind of movement. Um, first of all, we've got physical stories. Um, basically, physical stories just means having the children do actions as you read a story or tell a story. It doesn't have to be a story either. It can be any text from your course book or even a listening. Um, just have them stand up in their place and do the actions. You can. Uh, show them which actions to do, or they can make up their own actions. Um, guided imaginary trips. Um, 
With this activity, I stick flashcards around the classroom on the walls and I take the children around as if it was a, a school trip, an excursion. And it's a bit like a guided visualization. So they have to imagine um, what, what they're seeing really. But I'm using the flashcards as a visual support. Um, themed yoga, um, another activity that Elena mentioned in her session earlier. Um, I love doing uh, themed yoga and you can find lots of resources online um, for uh, yoga for children where the poses are themed. Uh, so animals is the obvious one, but things like space or the seasons, uh, you can also find um, resources for those. I'm going to share a website with you at the end. And you don't need to know how to do yoga yourself, really. Um, however, you, you should be prepared to do the poses, to model them as best you can. And I've used uh, yoga stories with children as young as four. Uh, you can see in this picture here and throughout primary up to 12 years old. And then of course, um, silent physical games. So any kind of game where they have to use their bodies or mime um, work well. Um, other mindful activities, I think these are mindful because they give children the time and space to explore and learn quietly, are uh, any kind of drawing, arts and crafts, building activities, and sensory activities, so um, bringing things in for the children to explore with their senses or even taking them outside uh, to do the same. And I haven't got a lot of time left, so the last thing I wanted to discuss was breathing and relaxation activities. Now, at the beginning of this session, we did a little relaxation. And for this, I used a script. I adapted a script from, from this book here on the, that you can see on the screen, which is written by um, actually a friend of mine who's a yoga teacher. And um, she's self-published this book of scripts. Um, and you can use your um, relaxation scripts as a listening activity. Um, you could also get the students to move, like um, do yoga poses or, or just some kind of actions, or just sit there and listen. Um, you can write your own scripts quite easily um, using the vocabulary and the structures that you've been uh, going, uh, you've been covering in class. Um, so I, I just think these kind of activities are really nice. They really calm the children down um, and there's, there are a lot of benefits to them. Okay, I think I've got like one more minute. So I have a couple of essential tips <laughs> um, and uh, these are just things from my own experience that I wanted to share. Um, make sure you have a system for entering and leaving the classroom. It may sound obvious, but I have had students running into the classroom, slinging their backpacks on the floor and racing to get the best seat. <laughs> Model how you expect the students to come in um, and make sure they do so. If they're older kids, I will invite them to go back outside and come back in in a more appropriate manner if necessary, because the way they enter really sets the tone for the rest of the lesson. And my last tip is to not blame yourself if it all goes wrong, because we all have bad days and teaching children can be very stressful. Um, by all means, reflect on, on what went wrong in, after a bad lesson. This is actually really useful. Uh, but at the end of the day, after the lesson, you need to wipe that slate clean and just go home or go to the next class um, with, a, with a positive mindset, okay? So, and always just remember that it's not your fault. I think this is really important as a new teacher, an early career teacher, it's very easy to, to get kind of, to take things personally as somebody's just, as Elena has just said in the chat box. Um, so I think that's uh, it for me. This is the final slide. I'm going to copy and paste these links um, in the chat box now. Um, and um, I'm going to have a look at your questions. So let me just share that in the chat box. Okay, you should have the links and the names of the the publications there. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, so that I can see the questions better. 
Okay. So let's have a look. Okay, I'm starting from the bottom. Can we do breathing and relaxation activities for lower primary students? Yes, of course you can. I think you can use breathing and relaxation activities with any age, any age at all, with adults, with early years. Um, oh, sorry, you haven't got the links. Okay, I will, I think I probably didn't share it with everybody. Let me try again. There, I think you should have it now. Um, going back to the question. Um, I, with, I, when I was teaching um, early years, I, I did quite, quite a lot of um, yoga and, and I had this, um, this ball, um, it's called a Hoberman sphere, I think, um, shame I haven't got it now, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of mesh sphere that opens and closes like this, it expands, and um, I use this to, to help with breathing, with deep breathing and the, the children loved using that to, to, to kind of breathe in and breathe out together and while they're doing that then you can do relaxation, use very simple relaxation scripts so it can just be very simple sentences. Um, so yes, by all means with lower primary, with upper primary, with um, early years, I think you can do it with, with all ages. Um, Same says, we have a long curriculum to study and 40 students in my class, so how to get them quiet and energetic at the same time? <laughs> well, at the same time, it's quite, <laughs> quite tricky, um, but I, I understand um, 40 students, it's very difficult to, to get them quiet, I would, I would imagine. Um, I think you need to use, the, the, you can use the same techniques, but um, uh, obviously classroom management with large classes is a bit different. Um, and you, you, you mentioned having a long curriculum to study. I guess that means you have a lot of content to teach. Um, I don't think you need to do the activities that I've shared today instead of your, uh, your curriculum. You can use it with your curriculum and just adapt some of your activities. That would be my, my advice. I'm going to have a look at the questions again. Um, do we include soft songs while they close their eyes? Yes, uh, I, I was going to mention this actually. Um, playing some background music it can really help. Some um, calming music, maybe some classical music. Um, it can really help, I think, with the relaxation. Um, and it also stops, it stops students from getting distracted by any other sounds or noises that they might hear from the corridor from another class uh, so yes definitely uh do i have any more time for any more questions rachel or is that I it have to take a break there michelle um, i'd like to say thank you very okay. much for your talk that was really interesting I've, I've got loads of advice from you for there that i want to try with my primary learners now um, and i feel quite relaxed myself as well so thank you very much <laughs> um everybody will take a five minute